going to lie, guys. It was the reason why I didn't put up a stream yesterday. Everyone in their mum was, was having Altai and Hillendale games. But I gave in in the end. Because this time around, at least there's a difference. The Ottomans. Vigorous jazz hands as I say that. The Ottomans that have quickly risen through the ranks is an eh, okay sieve to, in most people's eyes, the de facto kings now. Could they be good on Altai? Is there a map they're not good on? Maybe water maps. I saw a few attempts to make them work on Boulder Bay that fell flat. Uh, as flat as I wish my stomach was. Um, but you know, outside that, they look good. They always looked on top. I can't think of really any situations where I kind of rolled my eyes and went, this sieve needs a buff. In fact, right now, there's kind of an argument around that maybe it needs a little bit of a nerf, especially around the meta, especially with the early access to metas, the Vizier points. And get that movement speed buff on top of the attack speed aura. Let's see how it plays out here, though, because both sides have that, right? You've got movement speed buff via the Yam, and you've also got attack speed versus the Khan. And at this point, I sound like I'm huffing copium trying to compare the two because <laughs> they, they really aren't comparable. But we'll just have to see what Linok can do on the Mongols to try and overwhelm what is quickly becoming everyone's favorite Civ. Especially with the insta opening into the military school. Love this choice. It's actually a really great opening up against the Mongols as they typically go for the insta racks into an outpost rush. That means you can have a few spears ready to combat them. And the cool thing is you don't really sacrifice too much of your, your timing into feudal age to do so as the Ottomans. Especially if you're able to delay the, the outpost going up through maybe a, a half a minute, a minute or what have you. That's enough of a difference that when you arrive, you should probably be decently far ahead of uh, the Mongol player as long as you have backup wood lines. Because remember, most of these outpost rushes that the Mongols do target out a wood line. One issue you can have if that's your idea by Linok is, is there's not enough there's not enough limitations shall we say for Wham here he's got plenty of wood accessible on, on each flank also uh, another issue is let's say you as Linok choose to target out the gold we've seen Ottoman, Ottoman players do not care about gold they really don't give a damn as long as they've got enough to at least get the feudal maybe they want an upgrade or two afterwards it'd be nice out of the blacksmiths but it's not needed because this sieve can just function off of sheer spam of food and wood units via spears, sapahi, and then of course the archers. We'll see which way he wants to go. Of course, you are always going to open up the spearmist, only thing you can build at the beginning out of the military school. Also, perhaps a rax, which I quite like here. Like for one, you're going to need a rax anyway if you're relying on spearmen in your comp as you scale into feudal, because you're going to want to upgrade to the hardened status. And this also guarantees that every time you see what Linok brings in terms of spear count, you can mirror it or exceed it. Let's talk about Lee's starting as well. Gold is really far off here, and the Uvu was retracted behind. He has at least got the deer. I'd love to see him move onto this quickly. One of the big issues you have, though, when you're playing the Mongols is you can't immediately go onto the deer. Right, that you need to get yourself a Gur, and Gurs are 100 wood each. So the only way you're able to make that type of play is if you, say, have a Gold Vein right next to your wood line, which uh, there was an option down here, but let's be fair to Lenok. Like, yeah, he, he barely sees it as it is. And on, on, on spawn, he definitely did see it. Not to mention the fact that you'd have to idle your TC so long to walk down here anyway. We talked about this, this element of what Lenok was going to attempt to do and the response coming out from Wham. He already outmasses what Linok has. You can see two more spearmen coming. One that's going to be passive, the other one that's going to be paid for. At which stage, this outpost attempt, if that's what he's going for, is a fat fail. That's why you'll see Linok hasn't even bothered to pull a villager anymore. Just no point. It's a great read on the opener coming out from Wham. And this should be where he looks to move up as quickly as possible with the Madrissa. Could even look to move on the deer if he gets mid-map control. Like, this is a very decent spawn to play off of deer. Uh, but the Madrissa is always going to be better. And usually you don't need that much food as the Ottomans and feudal anyway, as most of your comp relies heavily on wood, right? Typically you'll see two to three archer rangers dropped by an Ottoman player depending on the build. And that means you're sp expending a lot of wood, but not too much food. Oh, oh no. Well, that was not the place to be. Uh, Lenok just lost the Khan. He just lost four sheep alongside it. Now, the only upside for Lee is that there's no scout. The downside, however, is that this Spearman, he's really licking his lips at the prospect of having a Donner Kebab here. He's going to stab all the sheepies down. And the brilliant part is because they're next to where the Madrissa's going anyway, 
He can still play off of Sheep if he needs to. In fact, this is an insanely good Madrissa. So he's got the berries. He's got deer all around him. He's now even got some sheep. It doesn't get much better than this. Tech up at least coming from the other side from Lee. But you can see as it stands, Wham is ahead. I also don't know what's going on. Okay, so that's an interesting thing that happens with the UI. So you notice in this, guys. If the name is longer, it stretches out in the bar kind of like... <laughs> but then on the other side, if you've got a very short landmark, it condenses it to the extreme. You have to talk to AP on whether that's intended, because that seems like um, maybe an unintended element to the, the UI. I think it maybe looks better if they just have the same distance on the bars, especially when you're trying to compare them being neck and neck here, because they are actually neck and neck. It's just one bar is stretched out a lot more than the other. See? Boom. So tech up complete. Now, Lenok, do you just hop, skip, and jump up? Can you afford to? I think in this matchup, you want to, but it's very difficult because you know what's going to come next. There it is. It's going to be the double archery range drop. Might even see a third one to follow us up in another minute or two when you have enough villagers on wood. And at that stage, it's going to be a mass force of archers pushed at you. Also, another cool thing for Wham, because he's got all this food source close to his base, he doesn't need to go for the sheep first with his Vizier points. Instead, he can just insta-go into the meta and get that attack speed aura working for him, which is exactly what he does. Great play. Great read. I'll move out with the spears. Now, remember, the way this works is if you unlock that Vizier point where you get the meta, you don't just get a free meta, which is a big boost already. You also get an extra enhancement. You get this movement speed bonus of 15% as long as you're in the formation. So these speedy boys, even when they reach the Mongol base, are going to be as fast as the Mongols. And that is why this matchup is really difficult for the Mongols. There are some matchups where you both go archers and you have an edge because you can move away or move in quicker as the Mongols. You don't have that here. The Ottomans, it's kind of crazy to think that this one unit with 180 health on top of it all, it's basically the English aura and the Mongol aura in one. And that 180 health, I mentioned it for good reason. It's no, it's no small thing to turn your nose up at. right? Scholars, by comparison, have 130 health. Think about how difficult it is to kill a scholar early on with a small amount of archers. Now imagine it's even harder, because it is in this situation. The only upside compared to Scholars is at least any damage done to the meta is perma. The difference is these metas can casually be replaced if need be. And look at this, like ships in the night. The scout is going to give some info over, so Lenok knows exactly where they are, and it looks like Wham just got a whiff of it too. He's going to regroup, look to clash. A lot of archers are here for Lenok. But in fact, they're neck and neck. You can see the count right now. It's even Stevens. Clash coming out, a chase in. It's a fight that Lenok just does not want to take. And you can see this trickle of reinforcements on the side. Doesn't have enough damage in them. Spearmen just keep pursuing. And archers are going to be exposed. Now, this is problematic. That meta is still banging the drums. And as a result, it's probably banging your mom. Archers are going to move fast. Chase away the remaining archer battalion from Lenok. Spears are going to be cleaned up. And at the end of that fight, just look at the difference here. Wham killed almost three times what Lenok did. Obviously not in that fight. Across the, the course of the game, because you remember he lost the early spears as well. But it's going to escalate. Khan goes down as well. Oi, oi, oi. I mean, this is this is grim tidings right now for Lee. You're about to be boxed in fast here. And remember your TC, like it's your buffer point. But there's nothing really stopping Wham from wrapping around south side and getting on top of where your, your gold is and your production buildings are at. Behind this Wham. Now very comfortable, very unhindered. You'll notice he'll start to prep the Sapahi. This is the next step. Wouldn't be surprised if we see two additional military schools drop soon after he gets the Vizier point. And then you start pumping horsemen out passively. Well, I'm getting a little bit frisky. He isn't quite respecting the outpost enough, but luckily he has a big enough force that he doesn't have to feel hampered by this too much. You know, he'll still be able to back away and maintain mid-map control. Lino needs to flip the script. He needs to change the flow of the game because a long feudal doesn't really serve his purpose anymore. He needs to find a way of reaching up while he still has the resources to do so. Because if he waits too long and these deer disappear, there's no way you're getting up an age. Right now, the benefit he has is that Wham doesn't have a breach point. Right, He's got these archers. He's got a few spearmen. He doesn't have a way of torching down these outposts or all these buildings on the backside as a result of that. So while he still has the breathing room, I'd love to see him just prep himself for a go up. But 
it's tough, right? When you're in a situation, when you see the count from your opponent, you get very tempted to match it, to mirror it, to exceed it, which is what Linok is now doing. It's a Pahi arc. Give me a move through the other side. So he gets info on what the layout is. He sees the blacksmith. He sees the stables. He sees the commitment that's coming out. So he understands that Linok is going into horsemen ahead of the Sapai transition to Wham. He sees the blacksmith as well. And what's the insta result of this? Wham says, okay, if you want to play long feudal and you're not coming out your base, I'm going to get a free tech up. Mehmed, Imperial Armory already underway. And Wham, he'll know this is a freebie because Linok hasn't come out of his base. Lee also hasn't saved up resources to boom up. If anything, he's floating a lot of wood. Maybe there was an intent to go for a secondary TC, but no intent to go towards Castle Age here. And the timing. The timing is going to be too late, I'm afraid. You can see the Mehmed is already half done. These archers are now only leaving the base. Wham is also prepping more archers behind this. So by the time you arrive, it's going to be a neck and neck military count. Then you've got maybe 30 seconds to do what you can as Lenok before the upgrades come through. Because if you wait the full minute, like you're already going to be losing the fight. He gets the scout out. He sees it. Imperial Armory. And this, this could be tight. If he jumps right now, he could potentially slow this down. But it is going to be incredibly difficult. Imperial Armory committed to. Hutchinson and Spears need to clash with this. Villagers are being ignored. Lenok is forced to exchange with the military, which means the Mehmed is going to be complete. Carslage is going to be unlocked, and Lenok is now at a full disadvantage. He has to die fast. Into the choke point he goes. Spy is going to hold him at bay. You'll notice that the drum boy is going to back up alongside all the villagers. The only thing that Lenok can do, he needs to stagnate all this economy, make sure that it cannot gather, so that there's no way Wham can unlock the full potential. And while that is happening, Lenok himself must now reach Castle Age. Staying on patrol for the moment. He understands his time here is limited. Maganels are going to take a while, but once one comes out in the field, he's done here. Archers aren't going to clash. Upgrade is not complete yet for Wham. But he feels that he needs the food, remember. He hasn't got much in the way of food back at home towards the TC. So he needs to get back on the minaret. He needs to get onto these berries. Trade out will continue. And you notice the meta is not being focused here. So Lenok will not remove the attack speed aura. But now he's done the damage. He's done what he needs. He needs to just finish the tech up now. Last of the gold's coming through. Step read out now on the way. Lee. He'll just keep his opponent pinned in the base. This is maximum value actually for Lenok right now. He even goes after the meta, snipes it out. Good maneuvering. The upgrade should be kicking in any second now. With them there, Lenok knows he's got everything he can. He'll get out. Good timing as well. Great damage done here. The best value could have maintained out of that. I, I think Wham kind of got a little bit funneled into one location, right? Like we talked about this deer, the berries, the minaret, like all of it being on one spot, but the double-ended edge sword of that is like, great, you know, you're getting all this advantageous food gathering in one location, but it also means your opponent can strike one and it was at the front of his base. So great maneuver by Lenok. He recovers himself getting up into castle age, but now, wow, like one of the difficulties that the, the Omens can face is that first two to three minutes of Castle Age isn't exactly free. These production rates passively haven't fully kicked in yet. You haven't got your first siege. Now he does. So Lenok is going to have to find a way of keeping pressure on Wham's base. Otherwise, there's a risk this now snowballs. In fact, we're kind of seeing that snowball potentially coming already. Meta arms are starting to pump out fast. They don't take too long. New meta is also being prepped. In terms of Vizier points, the main ones Wham did get his hands on. Uh, he got the extra military school. Actually, maybe he didn't. Interesting. Did you go back for the sheep? He didn't get the sheep. He definitely got the meta and movement speed. There's a ring a ding ding of another point. I think he got the increased production speed. Apologies, this is one limitation right now of uh, capture age. Is you can't check Vizier points. Luckily, some of the most impactful ones are kind of obvious. You can kind of check and see quickly if the production speed has increased. Also, things like the Janissaries or the Sheep, they, they appear. Um, I would say he's leaning into the production ones. Wouldn't be surprised if we get into the extra military school soon. Uh, I'm not going to hop back to old, mil uh, old caster mode because if we hop back to old caster mode, people will see the end of the game. So that's why we're not checking.
Looks like Wham's going to be on the move first. Lee Nong, of course, knew what was coming, so he's going to prep Springles to react to the Maganel play. So this got an outpost start. You can see Wham has similar intents in mind. He's prepping the crossbows. Brilliant play here. It'll counter out Lenox crossbows equally. And if there's a minute arms play by the Mongols, they're going to be overwhelmed. Right now, these villages are getting a little bit overwhelmed. Reaches into the tree line because he sees through it here. So a few villages going down the Mongol society. Outpost is now going to be torched as well. Mango shot's going to assist at being even faster. And four villages are going to be coming out to the death. Not to mention the rest near the berries. Now get the outpost up. Wow, I'm getting a staging point just outside of Lenox base here. Eco being sacrificed, a dive coming out. If he can get rid of the Springwood, he maintains full control here. And just two knights is all it's going to take. Lenok will lose the anti-siege. Wham with the commitment to dive gets full value here. We'll look to get out before he loses the army. Even so, like that's going to cripple Lenok. Keep in mind that was his wood line. He hasn't set up for an additional over here. He's moved out for food sources, but wood is now lacking. He has no access to it. He's going to try to get out there, but I mean, if you just wrap north side as Wham, there's no wood available to Lenok. That, at that stage, he has to migrate his entire wood line. And he needs that wood. He needs it for the archers. He needs it to get into the additional infrastructure. He needs it for the Springles to allow him to even fight. And Wham is just doing a brilliant job of keeping pedal to the metal. Also, keep in mind the Ottoman Maganels are more lethal because of this. The meta is going to be there. The, the attack speed aura affects them. So just a few extra attacks coming out over long periods of time, right? Allows him to easily see through this outpost quickly. Brilliant read. Another issue with the Ottomans when they get on the defensive. These outposts only have 750 wood. No way to increase that. Wait, is the Khan about to lose to a villager? Nah, he, he good. He fine. <laughs> Can you imagine? Now this... Okay, I, I thought it was a, a temple. Thank goodness. I was about to say, if he was going into Shaman's next... Oh, he already is, isn't he? Yeah, so this is very ambitious. I think he started this before the assault, so it's kind of like Le Shrug and acceptable. But I, I honestly think that this has been a loss for him. This investment into Shamans, into the prayer tent, has set him further back, not in the head. Now the outpost's gone. It's about to go deeper into the depths of despair on the village account. Heavy mango shot in. Shaman will try to do what he can to give it a little bit of Medicare, but it's not going to be good enough. Just have to pull them away. Now he's not getting gold, though. Lenok at least has some in reserve. More troops are arriving. Double Maganel play. About to become quite the nuisance for Lenok. Spoon is at least going to chase one of those mangoes away. The mangoes hitting onto the archers. Decent strike comes out. Second flurry. And then a second wave coming out now. Wham. Even more knights onto the front side. They can deal with the anti siege. Both Maganels do go down. But Lenok is still hanging on by a thread here. And I think Wham is about to take his scissors and cut it. He sees the numbers now. I mean, after all that attempt to get rid of the siege, it looks good for Lenok for a moment until you look back and you see his main army is non-existent. And now with no access to gold, with everyone pocketed into a corner away from the main base, even if you get the resources to produce troops, they're going to die upon spawn. With that realization, he won't hang around any longer. Game goes the way of the Ottomans, as it almost always does at the moment.